We are on location at the Rodell Aquatic Center, and I'm joined by Susan and by Scott, and thank you guys for taking a second to be with us. Let's talk about the Rodell Aquatic Center and all that you have to offer here, because you offer a lot of swim programs that help people in a lot of different ways. So give us a little overview of what people can expect when they come here. A great experience is the first thing they should always expect when they come. We do everything from baby swim lessons to adult instruction to master swimming to fitness programs to deep water classes to hydro bike, um, stand up paddleboard yoga, just a variety, a, a huge scope. Lifeguarding classes, lifeguarding instructor classes coming up. Um, what else? Training, CPR classes, training for triathlons, uh, just everything you can think of with the water. And, and so both of you are the people they will be interacting with and, and when they come here and you sign up specifically for an area or do you come and you can participate in all of them? Well, fitness classes, you can participate in any fitness class that we offer. Uh, swimming, um, obviously, it's, it's uh, um, if you're a child, you're going to take child swim lessons. If you're an adult, you're going to probably get private lessons with one of the, the coaches that we have here at the, at the pool. Well, every time I've been here, I've seen a lot of activity from children all, all the way up to uh, senior citizens, correct? Yes, we have six months old, and I don't even know how old our oldest person is. I'm sure they are in their 80s or 90s. We do have a, a large demographic that includes that upper end, and I'll tell you what, it's inspiring to watch some of the fitness levels they have, for sure. Well, you know, one of the things as, a, as you get older, they tell us all, you need to exercise more, right? And so, isn't swimming one of the best ways of exercise? Oh, most certainly. Uh, there's no impact on the body. You're, it's all cardio. Um, it's just a great way of, uh, of exercising. So, if someone wants to become part of the group, uh, how does it work here? Like, do they become a member? Do they just show up? What do they do? Well, it's really easy. You walk in our front door, you tell us what you're looking for, and we get you enrolled in it. You can do anything from buy a couple visits to um, do six months of master swimming to just a couple weeks of swim lessons. Um, you're only purchasing what you're actually doing. So it's not like a gym membership where you have to shell out the big bucks or it's $20 a month out of your account. You're literally paying for what you're going to do. Um, you, you have a card when you check in and then each time you come you just simply swipe the card and when your visits are up it's just like a gift card you can just refresh it and put more things on your card. So that way also it doesn't limit the athlete you know we want to try this we want to try that then you can you can jump around from um, course to course and that way you can also keep a really well-rounded program if swimming is your only way of doing fitness between the regular lapping classes the fitness classes the skill-based classes so what were the things on the boards they were doing is that yoga um, yeah. Or surfing, or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, surfing, yes. yes. <laughs> like surfing. The yes, yes. <laughs> it's paddleboard yoga. It's it's actually a, a new uh, craze that's out there, and we decided to do it here. Our instructors are actually trained in that. Um, we do um, both paddleboard yoga in the water, and we actually do it in the uh, in the classroom here on boards um, to train. It's great for balance and everything. It's super great for balance. Yeah. So, do doctors ever recommend this for, for getting into shape after, after rehab? Yes, we get a lot of that. Uh, we have a program specifically for folks with MS. Uh, we have programs specifically for folks with arthritis. Um, we have in our deep water exercise classes, there's no impact. So we have a lot of people who have a new hip, have had some work done on their back, have had some shoulder surgery, um, all kinds of, like all of those issues. Fibromyalgia gets addressed in the small warm water pool. Uh, just, yes, it, absolutely. There's no, I can't even give you a single answer on that because there's such a wide scope that the aquatics can help you with. So we got to wrap it up. Uh, you're easy to get to. Where are you located? Right off Cedar Crest Boulevard. Right off Cedar Crest Boulevard, right next to the Da Vinci Discovery Center, but most importantly at the main entrance of Cedar Crest College in Allentown. And 
and Susan, any final word, anybody watching this, what they should think in terms of when they think of the Rodell Aquatic Center? It's fun. It's easy to get started. There's always something to do here. And we have a great staff, and we can't wait to meet everybody that comes in. Join me, your host, Art Cardos, for a special segment of It's a New Day called All In. Every Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. here on WFYL 1180 a.m. Do you believe God wants you to prosper at home, in business, socially, and financially? You can't separate your faith from who you are and what you do. We will be discussing that and more on a live call-in show called All In. So join me every Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. here on WFYL 1180 a.m. Isn't it about time for us all to be all in? Hello there, everybody. My name is Mario DiMartino. Welcome to another exciting episode of Cooking with Mario. I'm the owner of the Newburgh Deli in Newburgh, Pennsylvania, just outside of Nazareth. And we're just opening up a second location, late November 2015. Hope you come see us on William Penn Highway, right across from the Easton High School. Today, I've got a dish that I think everyone will like. Maybe even someone who's a vegetarian will like this dish because it's just that succulent. You know, the purpose of the show is to help get excitement about cooking again. It's about bringing back the memories of our childhood. It's about celebrating ethnicity. It's about feeding your family with fun and creating memories. Today, I want to share with you a dish that I was exposed to as a little boy, oh, 45 plus years ago in Philadelphia. And the name of the dish is porchetta. Hi, I'm Joseph Elias, founder of Elias Market, featuring a wide selection of international food items and the freshest produce at the lowest prices. Elias Markets in Allentown and Bethlehem are filled with an ever-changing variety of just-picked fruits and vegetables, tender meats, and deli products. Choose from aisles of international and hard-to-find food and household items. But don't take our word for it. Stop in and see for yourself. IRS problems? Corvino and Verwise, local specialist in tax controversies, has your solution. Save time and money. Never talk to the IRS again. Call today for a free consultation. Porchetta, and it's basically a sandwich. But it's not just any old sandwich, it's something really to write home about. You know, a lot of us grew up in Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey, and we remember the porchetta sandwich from the old uh, Catholic Church outings and the Italian feast. You know, I remember growing up in Philadelphia at the Feast of San Salvador and the Bridgeport Feast. This was always an annual favorite to go get a porchetta sandwich that was slow cooked for hours and hours. So with that said, I want to introduce you today to what is called in French the mise en place. And the mise en place is basically uh, things set aside or all of the things that you have ready. It's a French cooking term, meaning your ingredients that you're about to, uh, you know, put together to make your masterpiece. And today we have marvelous ingredients. Our main ingredient, obviously, is a beautiful pork shoulder, roughly three to four pounds. I'm serving about six or eight people today. Three to four pounds of a beautiful pork shoulder. You want to get one that really doesn't have um, the bone in it. And there's a reason for it because you have to be a great butcher to debone it. And they typically come with the actual pig skin on it, which is very tough to get off. It almost takes two people and a lot of strength to do that. So you want to get one that's prepared. Spend the extra money. This, this roast here costs roughly $8.50. I think it's pretty affordable, you know, for a family of five or six. We have some uh, chapata bread, or you can use a Kaiser bread if you're, you know, used to doing that back in the old days. We have some rapini here, broccoli rabe. We have some sharp provolone. We have a, a mixture of some herbs I want to talk about in a minute. And we have some rosemary. We have some oregano, fresh garlic, fresh parsley, some fennel seed, plenty of salt. We have domestic provolone for those who are not really uh, up to par with sharp provolone. If they find it too bitey or offensive, you can use domestic provolone, and I've got some sharp already cooked up there. Um, you know, our goal, our goal with this meal is to um, really marinate it, really to bring out the flavors in this uh, porchetta dish. 
Now the porchetta, you know, really started way back in uh, Italy, in Areccia, Italy, which is a, a southern town in the province of Rome. And, you know, today I want to do a little twist on the, the herbs of it and the seasoning of it by creating my own version of Herbes de Provence, which is a French blend. Traditionally, in the, the, the Italian culture, they're going to use um, savory, they're going to use um, oregano, and a mixture of some other herbs. I'm going to twist it a little bit and use a Herbes de Provence to, to give it a unique American flavor. Now, Herbes de Provence you know, has evolved, and in the last 50 or 100 years, the American tradition adds lavender to Herbes de Provence. In this case, we're just going to use uh, marjoram. You know, it's funny, you can get these, don't, don't think this is out of your reach. You can get these at, you know, the supermarket for like a dollar. So you need three, four different kind of herbs to make this dish a wow factor. We have marjoram, we have tarragon. Now tarragon is like a, a sweet version of, a, of an oregano, and it's great to use. We have thyme, you know, a traditional one there. Um, and then, in this case, rosemary and oregano. So let's get started on our herb before we put anything together. Margarine, thyme, tarragon, etc. And let's let's chop them real fine. Some people say you got to use the dry stuff, you know, in order to really get the flavor. And I'm like, really? What if you live out, you know, in the old country somewhere and you're picking these herbs by hand and you, it's, you know, you got to make the dinner. You don't have time to dry them, so there's nothing wrong with fresh herbs. Matter of fact, I prefer fresh herbs. So we're we got the three herbs there from uh, for the de, herbs de Provence. We're almost done there. You want to pick a little bit of rosemary. And watch when you cut that rosemary. It likes to fly everywhere. So mix your rosemary with that. And then lastly is the, is the fennel. The fennel is definitely something from, uh, from Italy that they use in Italian. I guess they call it the finocchio. You remember that term from the old days back when your, your grandparents were alive. They talked the, the different language, you know. And we use the fennel. Cut it up kind of fine. It does soften up while you... Um, while you, uh, you cut it. In this case, we're gonna do a little bit blending. Keep blending them herbs de Provence around, and then we're, lastly, we're gonna pinch it with some oregano. There we go. Keep mixing those herbs up nice and, nice and tender. Little delicious blend, herbs de Provence. Now we're gonna take our, our beautiful pork shoulder, bring it over to the cutting board, and we're going to do a few things to it. We're going to tenderize it. I got this little gadget here. You could buy it for about 20 bucks. I guess in the French they call it a couture. And it's basically a tenderizer. And it's got, it's got all these stabbers in it. Be careful. Very sharp. And you can press it down to see the, you know, the potential of this thing to go deep into your tissue of your, of your meat product. In this case, it's the pork shoulder. So I want to tenderize that thing a little aggressively on all the sides. So I make sure that those, those herbs and special flavors go inside there quite well. You watch yourself on the side here. Watch yourself on the side there. Now you're also going to get your sharp knife and you're going to score that very fatty part of the top. Almost like a cross hatch if you will. It doesn't matter what direction you're going as long as you're you're getting into it fairly deep. I want to make sure my pan over here is not going to flame up on me. I want to make sure I got the right, the right temperature. Okay, so now we've got these cavities we've created for, for internal seasoning, if you will. And the first thing I want to do to make sure that everything sticks correctly is I want to use that beautiful Newburgh Deli organic olive oil. And uh, it's, it's just my favorite. I use it in just about everything except for cereal, you know, just to make a funny. So we're going to rub the daylight out of our, our pork product, in this case, the potential porchetta. Don't be afraid to rub this thing in. It's okay. Now, now we're going to add our herbs de Provence. Wipe my hands off a little bit. We're going to get those herbs in that cavity. That's what you want, folks. In that cavity. Take the excess, press it down, flip it around, light coating there. Now, flip it back over, general seasoning. Remember, this is general in Italian. Garlic on everything, just about, you know. 
except for cannolis and things like that. Okay, <laughs> so got to have pretty garlic in there. Stuff it with nice garlic. In this case with the oil, because of the flash point, I'm going to use a little bit of vegetable oil and I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil. Okay, and then in doing so, I want to keep my pan off that oil right now. It's going to get a little too hot for me. So in doing so, we, we're going to get our, our parsley as well. We forgot a couple really important ingredients, and that's salt and pepper. You really have to salt the daylights out of this because um, it, really, it really brings the, the flavor of the meat out for some reason. It, it requires a pretty good amount of salt. And a cracked pepper. Remember, the meat has two sides, so you have to salt and pepper both sides. Okay, salt and pepper both sides. We're just about ready to put her into the searing process. So we're going to sear. We're going to sear this product. I prefer a nice hot steel pan. You know, I don't think you want anything else but a steel pan in this case. You know, you can just pick it up with your hands. There's nothing wrong with that as long as your hands are clean. You're going to go pork skin, shoulder, uh, fat down first. That layer of fat, that's, that's what you're looking for. Okay? We're going to let that work a little bit. I don't really waste any of this stuff because it's expensive and it's like, it's really part of your flavor. You don't want any wine this or anything like that. You don't need to complicate it too much. It's already, it's already got plenty of, plenty of flavor. You know, this, 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 this dish really brings back a lot of memories of the feast when we were kids and our grandmother. And I just want you to really give this meal a try. It's, it's, it's very hearty. And it's really not that bad for you. It's actually, uh, it's, it's very lean. It's got a little bit of fat content to it. It's affordable. And what we're going to do is we're going to jazz this up a little bit, sort of, sort of South Philly style. You know, 100 years ago, the Italians of South Philly took it to another level. You know, they, they, they inherited this tradition from their ancestors from Rome, and then they, they jazzed up this product by using not only the pork and the porchetta and all this similar herbs de Provence, but they added sharp provolone to the sandwich and some broccoli rabe to the sandwich. And that really makes it unique and makes it American Italian. And I, I hope you'll try that. You know, it's a great way to get your kids to eat some vegetables if they're not big on greens. You get your vegetables or protein and you get your, your starch. And uh, it's just... It's just an awesome, awesome product. We're pretty, we're pretty close to turning the other side here as she simmers away. You can move it around a little bit, get the sides up against the bulkhead so all your sides get seared. Porchetta makes me want to sing, you know, Jenna Luna, Mezzo Mari, Mamma Mia, Maradari song. You know, when I hear this, it just brings back all those beautiful memories. It, it makes the whole house smell like this marvelous marigold blend of, of herbs and, and spices. It's just, it's just delicious. We're getting ready for the turn here, folks. And I'm going to show you the color you're looking for. This is when you know you almost got a home run with this product. You get a slight flip, and that's, that's when the beauty comes out. That is, that is completely succulent, and it's, it's going to drive your family crazy. They're going to love this product when it's done. So what we do in this case is we let that render down for a while. We're not trying to fully cook it. Maybe about four to five minutes on each side. Once that's done, we're going to, we're going to jazz up the program a little bit by moving ahead in a time capsule, and we're going to take this product we're going to let it simmer down, and I'm going to bring you a finished product I prepared earlier for our benefit. I put it, I put it in this trusty little crock, and I always like to brag about these, you know, these little cookware deals I got. I went to the Goodwill, 
and I said, you know, I, I need another type of Dutch oven that'll match this dish. And I found this for 12 bucks, you know, and it's beautiful. It's porcelain, it's, it's oven ready, and inside is this marvelous, marvelous dish called porchetta. And as you look at that dish, it just says, eat me. I mean, it's just incredible. And, you know, it, it'll get to the point where when you pull this out, it's just going to fall apart on you. And you, you might not have too much luck keeping it intact, but that's what you want. Just like that. Beautiful succulent porchetta. In this case, plenty here for five or six people for nine, ten dollars. And then you want to you want to get the porchetta, you just want to, that's it, cut it with the strands. That's what you want. It's almost like Italian pulled pork, like a roast pork, but it's, its flavor is so unique, so European, and we're going to add this South Philly flair to it by putting it in a chapata bread. So what you want to do is you want to get a, a ladle. I'd like to thank our sponsors today, Elias produce market of Lehigh Valley, two wonderful locations. The Elias family who's been pretty faithful with us and keeping us on the air. We're just so grateful for their generosity. Give them a visit on Tillman Street and also on uh, Linden Street in Bethlehem. And they just got an incredible array of produce and ethnic foods. We also like to thank Corvino and Besides, um, sponsorship out of Wingat, Pennsylvania, and they deal with people who have IRS problems and tax issues. So if you've got a problem with the man, you need to see these folks. They're going to help you straighten out your, your money problems. And uh, we'll, we'll give further uh, information about that sponsor in a few moments. Okay, back to our, our dish here. We're going, to, we're going to get that porchetta. First things first, you've got to liven that, that bread up a little. In, in this case, it's chapada, or you can use a, um, a Kaiser roll. Okay, so I'm going to juice up the bread a little bit. This is kind of a secret there. And then we're going to gingerly put some of the porchetta, ro <laughs> sorry about that, roasted Italian pork, you know. Now our next step is to put the rapini on there, the broccoli rob. This makes it real. You get this sandwich like down, remember years ago, you get down to the Reading Terminal in Philadelphia or 9th Street and in Washington down in Philly, you know, in this case I'm going to put the sharp provolone on there like that, make it really authentic Americano, you know, press it down nice, and then just to really jazz it up, have a nice, a nice long chili pepper on there, nice long chili pepper, put this pork back into the, the dish here, I'm going to close the lid on that. And then we're going to cut that pork sandwich in half. Gonna spread it out like this. And let people see the succulent uh, aspect of that sandwich. It's really going to be a big seller. I'm really going to sell this at the deli, I think, because people have been asking about it. And I've just been longing to bring it back into, you know, existence here. And, you know, it, I didn't invent it. We're just, we're just resurrecting stuff that people used to eat years ago. And they're not too familiar with it. So the younger generations can see a sandwich that goes back at least a hundred years in South Philadelphia, you know, and I hope you've enjoyed this relatively simple meal, affordable. This is great for a party or a reunion or some sort of ethnic festival and just to sit down with your kids, enjoy the porchetta sandwich originated in Italy and perfected in South Philly. I'm Mario DiMartino with the Newburgh Deli. I appreciate you watching my episode and I hope you visit the deli sometime and, and God bless you and God bless America. I look forward to seeing you next time. You take care. Hi, I'm Joseph Elias, founder of Elias Market, featuring a wide selection of international food items and the freshest produce at the lowest prices. Elias Markets in Allentown and Bethlehem are filled with an ever-changing variety of just-picked fruits and vegetables, tender meats, and deli products. Choose from aisles of international and hard-to-find food and household items. But don't take our word for it. Stop in and see for yourself. IRS problems? Corvino and Verwise, local specialist in tax controversies, has your solution. Save time and money. Never talk to the IRS again. Call today for a free consultation.
plumbers that charge you just to show up at the door? Not Mr. Rooter S. Agentis Plumbing. S. Agentis has a no service charge policy. On top of that, there's no extra charge for nights, weekends, or holidays. No charge for travel time. They charge you for the job and nothing else, and you approve the estimate before they start. If it's an emergency, they're on call 24-7. S. Agentis Mr. Rooter Plumbing. Fast, affordable, reputable. Call 610-867-6001. Family restaurant. I'm here with Emmanuel, one of the owners. And Emmanuel, thank you for taking a minute to be with us. When you invite somebody out to eat, you show them everything. And we're sitting here in front of a lot of neat food, and we're going to talk about it. But let's talk about the Starlight for one second because it's for those that don't remember or haven't been here for a while, it has been rebuilt, rejuvenated. It's incredible when you come in here. And where is it? It's located on Route 78 and 100 South. Exactly 233 North Route 100. That is uh, in Fogelsville. And it's right across from uh, like some landmarks here. Yes, we have, well, we're right next to Yakos Hot Dog, who's been a landmark for a long time. Uh, across from Holiday Inn, the Confidence Center. Uh, what else is around us? <laughs> well, I tell you, right across the street, I think there's uh, just a whole lot of different things, but it's very easy to spot because when you see the diner, the restaurant, it's just gorgeous, and uh, I mean, it's really, when you walk in, I'm not sure what the design is, but wh how do you say, it's beautiful. Describe it a little bit. Uh, it's the new generation of diners slash family restaurants. It is an art deco, beautiful aquariums. Uh, the gentleman who designed it really took a long time to, to bring it to that. Um, I don't know how to design it. <laughs> it's gorgeous, uh, and, and it holds a lot of people. Now, what are the normal hours that you're open? We open 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Yeah, we mentioned the word diner, but when the food we're looking at does not resemble diner food. So do you have both two kinds of menus here, two kinds of food? How does that work? Well, uh, that is a good question. We have whatever diner would have. The regular classic diner. Meatloaf, chef, steak, liver, club sandwiches, cheeseburgers. But our idea is to bring something new into the dining experience. Mostly for our customers. They want something different, Italian, uh, sautés, different sandwiches, they act out of the ordinary, more like I should say. Well, let's describe some of these dishes, because if you just start even over this side and just go left to right, what are we looking at here? What is this? Well, we're looking for a boneless barbecue sandwich, that's a lunch specials, uh, served with bacon, cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, and french fries. It's excellent. Uh, Broil crab cakes, let's go with What do you call those? Uh, they are broiled crab cakes, actually Maryland crab cakes. We'll make them with 100% um, jumbo lump crumb meat. We don't hold back on that one. We want to get a name for ourselves for that. Well, and you know, the people who love uh, crab cakes, are, are they, they, they really do love them. And, and they search for places that have really good ones. And, and, and you're taking a lot of pride in these, so obviously they're the best. We do, because uh, I have a lot of travelers. So it happened, I have a lot of guys People, families from Maryland, and they ask, are they as good as Maryland crab cakes? And when they eat them, they say they're even better than the Maryland crab cakes. So I'm really proud of them. It's a new thing that we just started making them not too long ago, and it really goes very, very well. I'm, I'm really happy with them. Now, in the salad here, is that what's in the middle of that, too? That's what it is. It's a Caesar salad with a single broiled crab cake. Well, that is a great meal because a lot of people love salads, and they love crab cakes. So when you put them together... Older. Aging Umbrella LLC is a Christian-based company providing non-medical service with love, respect, compassion, and empathy on a one-to-one -one basis in an in-home setting. We can provide care for an hour a day or 24-hour care. We are locally owned and operated, and we look forward to serving you. Please visit our website or give us a call today. Join me, your host, Art Cardos, for a special segment of It's a New Day called All In. Every Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. here on WFYL 1180 a.m. Do you believe God wants you to prosper at home, in business, socially, and financially? You can't separate your faith from who you are and what you do. We will be discussing that and more on a live call-in show called All In. So join me every Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. here on WFYL 1180 a.m. Isn't it about time for us all to be all in?